So in this Zoom video, I'm going to go through some of the settings that you might encounter as you set up your account and your meetings. The first tab here is under Meetings, and you'll notice there are six categories. You can either click on each category, or as you scroll through, you'll notice the menu stays here on your left. I'm not going to talk about all of them. There are many that you don't have to worry about at this point. I have set some um, parameters at the district level, so things like the waiting room might already be on, and if you decide to shut them off, I don't know if it will do that or not. I want to make sure that your waiting room is on. I believe at some point in September, Zoom is requiring either a passcode or a waiting room, and we believe that a waiting room is a better way for you to check who's coming into your room or not. And let's see, you can also customize your waiting room or edit any options. You're welcome to check that out. This is about passcodes, passcodes, don't worry about that. You don't need to use them. This one here, only authenticated users can join meetings. Please don't turn that on. It means that your user, which is your student, needs to have a Zoom account in order to hop into your classroom. We don't want students creating their own Zoom accounts, especially our younger students. So by enforcing this, you're not allowing them in because I have blocked that ability at the district level. They'll receive all kinds of error messages and they won't be able to get in. So make sure that these settings are off. When you start to schedule your meeting, which we did in the last video, you can decide if you want to start your meeting with your host video on, if you want your participants' videos on when they come in, what type of audio type you're going to offer. I would offer both. Are you going to allow your students to join before you? And we're going to say uh, no. So it does say the administrator has locked this setting. I'll have to go back and double check some of these other ones so you can see which ones I've locked. We are saying you can't let those kids in the room without you. Also, are you allowing to use your personal meeting ID, which for me is that number or that um, Susie Brooks tag. You are allowed to use it, but you'll just have to decide when that's appropriate, maybe for parent meetings or something that makes it easy to get into your room. These are a lot of questions about those PMIs and whether or not you want to use them. I would definitely turn on this to say that all of your participants should be muted when they come in the room. If not, you might have a cacophony of voices and dogs and cats and baby brothers and sisters. Um, getting a desktop notification. Again, some of these you can play with on your own. I've just kept them off. Once you're in the meetings, these are some of the basic settings. I wouldn't worry about the encryption for third parties. You can decide if you're going to allow them to have chat. I'll go over that in another video as to what settings you can do once you're in the room. You can prevent people from saving the chat, which I think is actually a good setting to put on. I would have that on mine. I didn't see that one before. Are you going to allow participants to send a private message to another participant? I would not allow that. There's really no reason for students to send private messages to each other. They have enough technology to be able to do that on their own. We don't need to enable it within the Zoom platform. Are you going to save those chats so that when you're done with a chat it's going to be saved? Are you going to have a notification of sound when someone joins or leaves the room? It can be annoying to hear those sounds as a host, but it definitely is something that's worth it. I would not turn it on for everyone because that will be distracting for them. It's hard enough as a host to manage all that. Um, you can also, if someone's joining by phone, you can put in the permission to record their voice. Hopefully no students will need to join by phone. That's a setting you can revisit if it becomes an issue. Um, whether or not hosts and participants can send files through their in-meeting chat, it's okay for a host to do it. I don't think you'd want students being able to upload PDFs or files or photographs into the chat unless that's something that you've set ahead of time. Um, feedback for Zoom. Zoom loves it when you finish a meeting and you get to click on the little survey saying, hey, how did it go? That's your decision. And same idea, an end of meeting experience survey. Do you want it displayed after every meeting? I would definitely turn on your ability to have a co-host. We're exploring ways for you to have a co-host. I'm calling it a co-pilot in your meetings. Once we have our paid account set up, you will have the opportunity to use polls. And so this allows that to happen. 
whether or not you want the meeting to control toolbar that's what shows up at the bottom of a meeting it usually shows up when your mouse comes down but if you want it to show all the time you would turn that on show zoom windows during screen share those are all things that you can play with who you want to be able to screen share I would keep it to host only and then if you want a student to be able to do that you would make them a co-host for a minute or two and then let's see um, whether or not people can share their desktop or their screen I would definitely keep this on you don't want students to be able to just share their desktop or their screen at any time that they want to and then let's see allow saving of shared screens with annotations so this allows the host and or the participants to use annotation tools when you use the whiteboard so that's what you're deciding if you want to allow that and then whether or not you want to allow the whiteboard in general um, I have not explored the remote control nonverbal feedback I believe are the little icons the little emojis that you can choose take some time to look at that same thing with meeting reactions um, those are things like the applause or the thumbs up I believe so you could decide if you want them to be able to use that. Whether or not you're going to allow a removed participant to rejoin. If you have to have someone removed from the room for inappropriate behavior, if you keep this button off, then they can't get back in. So you decide what you want that to be. Whether or not you're going to allow participants to rename themselves. I have it on because I deal mostly with teachers, but students themselves, you probably want to rename it for them. If they come in and they're using the name Spongebob and they want to change it to Patrick and their name is not Patrick, then you don't want them to be able to keep messing with their names. So you can decide if you want this on or off. You can hide their profile pictures in a meeting if you'd like to be able to do that. This is some more advanced stuff that happens in a meeting. I will go over that in the advanced class about virtual backgrounds and all of that good stuff, whether or not they can live stream or all of this. I will go over in the advanced class, but that's probably enough as we've made our way through our recording. Woo. I think I'm going to make another video. Let's go with that.